Hello. <coughs> My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll solve problem number 148 and 149. Problem number 148, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says find three consecutive numbers such that when they are divided by such that when they are divided by four, five, and two respectively, the sum of their coefficients happens to be 24. Well, let's do that, shall we? Well, first thing we know is that there are there are consecutive. Three of there are three of them, and they are consecutive one after the other, such that when we divide the first number by four, the next one by five, and the one after that by two. The sum of the quotients, what does quotient mean? The sum of the quotient is 24. Quotient is a very fancy way of saying, we have learned this before several times, quotient is a very fancy way of saying the result of the division. For example, if you divide 15 by 3, if you divide by 15 by 3, 15 divided by 3, the answer is 5. answer is 5. This is called the quotient. Quotient simply means the result of the division. So when you divide these quantities by 4, 5, and 2, the three results that we're going to get of those divisions, the sum of those three results, sum of those three quotient, we are told is 24. Let's find the number, shall we? Enough of the talk. Let's find the number. So let's call the first one x. If the first one is x, the next one after that is going to be x plus 1, and the one after that is going to be x plus 2. And what we are told is that when we divide them by 4, 5, and 2, respectively, 4, first one, 5, the second one, and 2, the third one, the, the result of this division, which is called the quotient, plus this quotient, plus this quotient, we are told that the sum of these three quotients happens to be 24. And that's all it is. All we have to do now at this point is to solve this simple linear equation, and that's all there is. The well, very first thing we need to figure out is the common denominator. What is the common denominator here, the least common multiplier? We have a 4, we have a 5, and we have a 2. It looks like 20 should do. We can divide 20 by... 4 by 5 by 2. So a common denominator here is 20. The question is, how can we make this 4, the denominator of 4, into a denominator of 20? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 5. 5 over 5 is 1, so we're not changing it. We have a denominator of 5 here. How do we convert this denominator of 5 into 20? Again, the same thing. Take this quantity and multiply the top and bottom by 4 over 4. Very simple. This one has a denominator of 2, we need 20. Multiply by 10. Multiply top and bottom by 10. And here we have a denominator of 1. 1 won't do it. We want a denominator of 20. We want the same denominator throughout the entire equation so that the denominator ceases to play any role, so that the denominator ceases to be significant. How can we make this denominator in 20? It's 1 right now. How can we make it 20? Very simple. Take the quantity and multiply it by 20 over 20. So far, so good. All right. Let's continue. Pick up. Let's pick up the speed. We're taking. We're taking too long. I'm going at too much of a leisurely pace. So now they all have the same denominator: five times four, four times five, ten times two, and one times twenty. They are all twenty, and therefore, if you were to divide this entire equation by twenty, the twenty, or rather, if you were to multiply this entire equation by twenty, the twenty will disappear from each of the terms. It plays no role. So all you have to concentrate now is the top part, which is five times x, which is five x plus. 4 times x plus 1, let's write it down like this, 4 times x plus 1 plus 10 times x plus 2 has to equal 24 times 20. Let's pick up the parenthesis, 4x plus 4, here we have 5x, and then we will get 10 times x which is 10x, and 10 times 2 is 20. Again that is 24 times 2. We could have done this part right, right from here to here. We didn't need this middle step. I just did it so that it's easier for you to see. Let's collect the like terms. Let's see how many x's we have. We have 5x here. We have 4x here. That's 9. And we have 10x here. That's 19x. 19x would have to equal 24 times 20. And then we have a 4 here and a 20 here. A 4 and a 20 here. Let's bring this 24 on the other side by subtracting 24 from both sides. So listen very carefully, okay? This is going to get a little tricky, okay? Pay attention. 
So we have 19x plus 19, let's bring the plus 24 rather, 4 plus 20 is 24, let's bring the 24 to the other side, we're going to subtract 20, we're going to subtract 24 from both sides, how many 24 are we going to subtract from both sides? We're just going to subtract 124 because it's 4 plus 20 is 24, only one of them. Let's subtract 124. So we have 24, just one of them, we're going to subtract it. Do you understand? 20, 24 minus 124, or if you like, if you like, this one should go over here. Minus 124. 2024, 2024 20, minus 124 is going to give us 1924. 1924. And 1924 we are told equals 19x. And therefore x equals 24. Therefore x equals 24. That's it. We're done with the problem as far as the problem is concerned. As always, we're going to take two seconds to verify our work, make sure it is in fact the correct answer. By, by by plugging it back in the problem and see if it makes makes sense, okay? So let's do it here. Let's do the verification right here. Let's verify right here. We are claiming we are claiming that the first number in the sequence is 24, which means one after that is 25, and one after that would have to be 26. And we are told that if we were to take the fourth of that, fourth of 24, fourth of 24 plus the fifth of 25, which is 24 plus one, 24 plus one. If we were to take a fifth of that, plus 24 plus 2, which is 26, divided by 2. The sum of these three quantities, according to the problem, should be 24. Let's see if we let's see what we get here. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 26 divided by 2 is 13. 5 plus 5 would have been 10. 10 plus 13 would have been 23. 23 plus 1 is 24, which is exactly what it tells us. See what I did was. I pretended that this 6 was a 5. If this 6 had been 5, if this 6 had been 5, then 5 plus 5 would have been 10, 10 plus 13 would have been 23, but it's not 5, it's 6, so it's 24, right there. It checks out, which means our answer is indeed correct. You understand? I'm going to get out of your way. We're going to one, we're going to do one more, one more very similar question, nothing different, same logic, same method, same same myth, same rationale, same everything, just, just different numbers. So let's do one more just for practice. Again it says find three consecutive numbers, find three consecutive numbers such that when they are, such that when they are divided by 2, 3 and 5, let's do it in a different color so we can, 2, 3 and 5, such that when they are divided by 2, 3, and 5, the sum of their quotient happens to be 9. Exact same method would apply, nothing has changed, just different numbers. If you want to do it yourself, you can pause the video and do it yourself and then compare your work with the work that we are about to do together, okay? So I'm going to give you a second. In the event that you want to be able to pause and unpause the video, I'll give you five seconds. So let's get going. Instead of trying to do a surgery, it'll be quicker just to simply erase everything. Let's just erase everything, it'll be quicker. So we have three numbers, x, the one after that is going to be x plus 1, the one after that is going to be x plus 2. And we are told that when we divide these quantities by 2, 3 and 5 respectively, 2, 3 and 5, the quotient has, these three quotients have to add up to 9. These three quotients have to add up to 9. We have a 2, we have a 3 and we have a 5. What, what can we use as a common fact, com, least common multiplier? Let's find out. So we have a 2. Then we have a 3, then we have a 5, and then we have a 9. Or rather not 9, this is this is the denominator of 1. What the hell am I thinking? Well, in that case, actually very simple. The, uh, the, the least common multiplier is going to be 30. 30 is what we need here. 30 is what we need here. Question is, how can we, how can we convert this denominator into a denominator of 30? It's very simple. 
take the quantity and multiply the top and the bottom by 15. You multiply top and bottom by 15, now it has a denominator of 30. Here we have 3. How can we convert this into a denominator of 30? Very simple. Take the top and bottom and multiply it by 10. I left no room here. Multiply top and bottom by 10. And now this quantity has a denominator of 30. 10 times 3. Same thing here. It's a denominator of 5. We need 30. Take the quantity and multiply by 6 over 6. And now this quantity has a denominator of 30. 6 times 5 is 30. 10 times 3 is 30. 15 times 3 is 30. We need a 30 there as well. Multiply top and bottom by 30. There we go. And now we can pick up speed. Since now, since they have the same denominator throughout the entire equation, the denominator plays no longer any role. What we are essentially saying, when we say that it no longer plays any role, what we are actually saying in technical term is that if we were to multiply this entire equation, multiply it by 30, then 30 on the top and 30 on the bottom, they're going to kill each other. Same thing if you were to multiply this term by 30, 30 on the top is going to cancel out with 10 times 3, and 30 on the top here is going to cancel out with 6 times 5, and 30 in the bottom is going to cancel out with that 30. If you were to multiply the entire equation by 30, this 30 from, from the bottom of the each term will disappear. But the condition is that each and every term throughout the entire equation has to have the same denominator, which here we do. Do you understand? So, all we have to do is look at the top. So 15 times x is 15x, and here we find 10 times x plus 1. 10 times x plus 1 plus 6 times, if you like, 6 times x plus 2, 6 times x plus 2 has to equal 9 times 30. Let's see what we can do, shall we? This is going to give us 10x, this is going to give us 10, 10x, 10, 10, plus 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times 2 is 12, and don't forget we have 15x here. And that has to add up to 9 times 30, all of these terms. Let's collect our x's, shall we? Let's collect the like terms. We have 15x plus 10x, that's 25x. 25x plus 6x is going to be 21x. 21x has to equal 9 times 30. Now, you see at this point, at this point, we realize that we have no choice but to spend our time to figure out what 9 times 30 is because we have to subtract 22. 12 plus 10 is 22. In order to bring that 22 over there, we need to subtract 22 from here. In order for us to be able to subtract 22 from here, we can't just leave it as 9 times 30, so at this point we have no choice but to figure out what that is, which lucky for us is very simple, 9 times 3 is 27, so it's 270. So it's 270 minus 22, because we bring this 22 right here, this 10 and this 12, bring it to the other side, and we get 2, 5, and a 2. Am I right? 10 minus 2 is, 10 minus 2 is not 2, 10 minus 2 is 8. And that has to equal 21 times x. 21 times x. I need the room, so I'm going to continue this on the top. And let's see what happens, okay? If somebody, if somebody were to come, to, come up to you and ask, tell you that 21, 21 times some number, 21 some, some, times some quantity is 258, what kind of inference can you make about x? What do you suppose x must be? x would have to be, let's put it on the top. x must be, so we're going we're gonna to pick up from here. We're going to pick up from here. This implies that x must be 8. Why 8? Because the unit digit is 8. The unit digit, this unit digit we're talking about here, this unit digit is 8. If you were to multiply 21, listen very carefully, if you were to multiply, if you were to multiply 21 by 1, the product will end in a 1. If you multiply 22 by 2, 21 by 2, the product will end in a 2, unit digit will be 2, if you multiply 21 by 3, it will end in a 3. If you multiply 21 by 7, it's going to end in a 7. 
if you multiply 21 by 9, the unit digit will be 9. And of course it cannot be more than 10 because it's only 258. So this x has to be single digit. If this x is a single digit, it must be 8 because it ends in an 8. And if you don't believe me, verify it. It only takes 2 seconds to verify it. 21 times 8 it cannot take that long to do it out. 1 times 8 is 8 and 2 times uh, 8 is 16, which does not work out here. What the hell went wrong? So much for my... Did I make a mistake here? Is it 21? 15 plus 10 is... 15 plus 10 is 25. 25 plus 6 is not 21. 25 plus 6 would be 31. It's 31, not 21. But still, it does not change, it does not alter the fact that because of the fact that 31 ends in a 1, and this ends in an 8, x must be 8. x would have to be 8. Let's do it out here. 1 times 8 is 8, and 3 times 8 is 24. What the hell? What am I doing wrong here? 31 times 8, 248. Did I make a mistake here also? Yes, I made a mistake here. What the hell is the matter with me? But you see, even though there are so many errors, still the logical conclusion tells us it has to be 8 because it ends in an 8. That part was correct. I did not make a mistake here. It does end in an 8. And this does end in a 1. And just based on that, we can conclude that x has to be 8 even though there are so many errors here. You see, when we borrowed 1, when we borrowed 1, the 7 becomes 6, and 6 minus 2 is becomes 4, not 5. I tell you, what the hell is the matter with me is what I want to know. So it is 248, which is exactly what this is, which means x is indeed 8. x is indeed 8. The very last thing we're going to do, as we always do, is to verify our work, which in this, by this time, of course, we know is correct, but verify it anyway. Where can we verify it? Let's verify it right here. It only takes a few seconds to verify it. The work is right here. Half of x, x we, x we are claiming is 8. x we are claiming is 8, right here. x must be 8. x, x we are claiming is 8, and we want to verify that. Half of 8, half of 8, plus a third of the 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. Third of that, right here, one third of that, plus... 8 plus 2, which is 10 over 5, the fifth of the last number. These three quantities, according to the problem, they have to add up to 9. As long as they add up to 9, our answer is correct. Four, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, which is exactly what we wanted. It's supposed to be 9. We were told that the sum of the three quotient is 9, and that is indeed what we show here, which means our work is correct. Do you understand? Despite the fact that it was I who was doing it. Bye now.